Good evening, and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church to our Wednesday evening devotional worship uh, here. We have been throughout this season, uh, as we gather on Wednesday evenings, we are gathering around this theme of we lift our voices. And it's been a wonderful opportunity to be able to hear from folks here in the congregation about some of their favorite hymns and songs of faith and what they have meant for them. And so tonight we get to hear from Florence, Florence Doksansky um, as she talks about the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, a beautiful hymn, especially for, for difficult times in our life. So we are glad that you have joined with us no matter where you are this evening. Um, we are here to worship the Lord. So we begin with um, a litany of welcome. God is our light and our salvation, our, our refuge, refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we, we praise, praise your, your name, name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life. And, and in your know. light, we see light. We've been singing this song over the past four Sundays, and uh, before we um, turn over to a new song for the month of July. We're going to sing this whole song tonight. So join in. Here we go. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Turn, turn, turn. And a time to every under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to reap a time to kill a time to heal a time to laugh a time
Many of you are aware that almost every word we use in, in worship is from the Bible. You know, whether it be words of the liturgy or from songs we sing. Um, the song that we're going to sing in a moment, It Is Well With My Soul, is one of those songs that is rich with scripture. Almost every line of that, of that hymn is from scripture. So I could be here all night reading to you all of the scriptures uh, that correlate with every single line. Um, I'm not, we're not going to do that, but I am going to read a number of uh, several different scriptures um, just in hopes that as we sing this hymn in a moment, um, you'll be reminded of, uh, as you sing certain words, you'll re be reminded of some of these scriptures. So the first three that I want to read um, are uh, in line with the refrain, it is well with my soul. The first scripture is from Thessalonians chapter 5. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have that promise of God's peace with us. And again, from Philippians chapter 4, again, uh, in line with, as we sing, it is well with my soul. Paul writes, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And uh, from 1 Peter chapter 1. In this you rejoice. Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. So that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold. That though perishable is tested by fire. May be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. I love that scripture reminding us that especially uh, when we are in times where we have been tested, that our faith is what holds us up. Um, we will sing one of the verses. We, we sing, we, we sing, though Satan should buffet, though, sh though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. So when I want you to hear this uh, from the words, in the words of scripture from Romans chapter five. Therefore, 
since we are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For a while we were still weak. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And finally, I end with one more scripture, because, uh, and I want to end with this one, because we're going to start the hymn uh, singing, When peace like a river attendeth my way. And from, so from Isaiah 66, we hear this. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. When peace like a river. There are some days that are so difficult that you need to hear words from outside beyond it yourself. Words that promise that no matter how difficult life may get, no matter what struggles you face, God has you covered. Sometimes... It might be the death of a loved one, a loss of a relationship or, or a job or a property, or maybe today may be extremely difficult for you with the fear of uh, this global pandemic, frustration here in our country at the political antics, our anxiety over racism or protests, or maybe it's not just one thing, but it's a, a, a multiple, multiplicity of things that make you feel overwhelmed by it all. So tonight you have a reminder and not some naive, feel-good platitude that everything's just going to be okay, but a reminder that no matter how bad it may get, it is well, because God is with you. In life and in death, Christ is with you and promises you life. Florence Doksansky is going to share some words about her favorite hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, a hymn that she has found great comfort in, and I hope that after this night, if you haven't already, you will find great comfort in too. Especially when you hear about the, the struggles of the man who wrote this hymn and his confidence in a God of love who breathes life and peace into our lives through any struggle. So listen now to Florence's words. So one of my, hi, my name's Florence Doksansky, and one of my favorite hymns is a hymn that I never even remember hearing about until my father's funeral. My father was much beloved and he loved to give us surprises. So the hymn is, It Is Well With My Soul. And you're all like, how is that possible if she didn't know that hymn? Um, actually, it is kind of surprising since I had an uncle who was a Presbyterian minister, my husband was American Baptist minister, and I have a nephew who's a Southern Baptist minister. So it's a well-beloved hymn that everybody knows, except me. <laughs> and since I was a history major and an academic librarian, I couldn't resist looking up information about the man who wrote it. His name was Horatio Spafford, and he lived in the 1800s, and he had many tragedies in his life. He also had many successes. He actually was a lawyer, and he taught medical jurisdiction at a university. He was active in the YMCA and in his Presbyterian church. And in the early 1800s, 1880s actually, he bought a huge amount of property around the Chicago Lake. 
obviously that would be a success if we didn't have the great Chicago fire of 1881 that basically wiped out his property. So he was trying to recover from that and he encouraged his wife and four daughters to, that they were gonna take a vacation in Europe. And he had a business um, thing come up and so he sent them ahead of him. They were on the SS Ville de Havre when it hit another ship. Four, all four daughters were lost. His wife survived the collision and supposedly on his way to meet her in Wales where they had taken the survivors, he wrote, oh, it is well with my soul. When you hear the words, <laughs> you know that he had a deep and abiding faith which he would need because it wasn't his only tragedy. In the 1880s, his only son, at age three, died of scarlet fever. I had to double check the statistics and the facts because it seemed like, how could he have lost four daughters and his son and still have grandchildren? <laughs> but he did have two other additional girls. And after his son died, he moved away from sort of financial businesses and into the, his spiritual journey. He held a prayer meeting um, weekly in his home and the American press called the group the Overcomers. He had a lot to overcome. Then he moved to Jerusalem in 1881 and engaged in charitable works with his wife and others. And interestingly, he worked for all faiths. He worked for Muslims and Jewish people and Christians in their communities, and he gained their trust because he did not proselytize, which I found interesting because he was a follower of Moody. <laughs> but anyway, he and his wife actually adopted a Turkish Jewish teenager. And today his granddaughter is head of the Spafford Children's Center in Jerusalem. He's car she's carrying on the work of her grandparents. And I find it interesting that the words of his hymn are so meaningful for us today. So thank you, Dad, for introducing me. God bless. Take care.
Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. go into this evening with the blessing of God Almighty, who will watch over this day and every day. Amen. We will be opening up the chat feature if you would like to bless one another and greet one another in this time. 